radioactive capsule. While all of us are aware of the infamous Ukrainian radiation accident at Chernobyl, far fewer of us have heard of the deadly tragedy that silently and slowly befell the inhabitants of an unknowing apartment building in the city of Kramatorsk in Soviet Ukraine. In the late 1970s, residents of apartment 85 of building 7 and at the adjacent apartments began to suffer from bizarre health complaints. In 1980, when the apartment in question was occupied by a young family, an 18-year-old woman suddenly and mysteriously died. Two years after this, the woman's 16-year-old brother suffered a similar fate, and soon after him, their mother also met her demise. Despite these unusual deaths, the mysterious and deadly apartment received little attention. Doctors initially declared that the root of the illness was related to hereditary health issues in the afflicted, but when another young family's son suffered a similar fate after moving into apartment 85, a full-scale investigation was finally launched. It was determined that all four had died from leukemia. In 1989, after residents, including the father of the most recently deceased boy, urged officials to check local radiation levels, a vial of cesium-137 was discovered, buried within a concrete wall. The wall in which this highly radioactive substance was found was situated directly next to a child's bed. By the time this frightening discovery was made, four residents had died of radiation-associated cancer, and another 17 had suffered varying dangerous doses of radiation. While the main concerns were for the health of the victims, the origin to the vial of cesium-137 remained a mystery, until it was later discovered that it had once been part of a radiation-level gauge, which had been lost in the Karansky Quarry in the late 1970s. Workers had looked for the deadly capsule for one week before officials called off the search. Gravel from this quarry was later used in the construction of Building 7, explaining how the deadly vial made its way into the walls of Apartment 85. Witch Bottle In Victorian England, accusations of witchcraft were rife, and large numbers of innocent individuals were executed for allegedly practicing the dark arts. While little evidence was produced at the time, history has unearthed some sinister finds. Witch bottles were a form of bottled spell used to attract and trap negative energies. While more than 200 of these curious artifacts have been recovered, almost all have been broken or opened, and so historians had struggled to determine precisely what their contents had once been. This was the case until 2019, when a group of contract builders began to dismantle the chimney of an old pub in Watford, England, and made a gruesome discovery. The wax-sealed, torpedo-shaped bottle was unopened and appeared to date back to the 1800s. Most bizarrely, the pub, formerly known as the Star and Garter, was the known birthplace of an infamous witch named Angeline Tubbs, who later became known as the Witch of Saratoga. Tubbs was born in the pub around 1761, but moved to Saratoga Springs, New York at the age of 15, where her fortune-telling abilities became well known. Upon close inspection and laboratory analysis, the curious vessel was found to contain fish hooks, human teeth, and a liquid, which, based upon contemporary writings on the subject of witch bottles, is likely to be human urine. When asked to comment on the grisly find, the owner of the building, who opted to remain anonymous, said, I will probably hide it away again for someone to find in another hundred years or so. Another modern discovery of a witch bottle occurred several years before in Greenwich, where it was found buried upside down. This bottle was dated even earlier from the 1600s and contained nail clippings, hair, and metal pins. Confirming the purpose of these strange concoctions is a court record dated 1682 from London's Old Bailey Criminal Court. This document contains a recipe for a witch bottle, which was given to a man who believed his wife to be afflicted by some form of witchcraft. The apothecary's recipe states, quote, Take a quart of your wife's urine, the paring of her nails, some of her hair and such like, and boil them well. King Henri IV's Head Henri IV ruled as King of France from 1589 to 1610. He became known by many of his subjects as the Good King, due to his policies of religious tolerance, but his reign was cut brutally short by an assassin named François Ravaliac, a Catholic who considered the king to be a usurper whose claim to the throne was illegitimate. Henri IV was stabbed to death when his coach stopped in traffic, resulting from the coronation of the queen. This was the last of at least 12 known assassination attempts made on the king. Centuries later, during the French Revolution, a mob ransacked the chapel which contained the king's remains and threw the bodies of numerous kings into a pit. 
Supposedly, Henri IV's head was severed and saved from this fate. While many have doubted this, records show that the grave was indeed exhumed in 1817. In 2008, a mummified head was found hidden in the attic of an elderly man who claimed to have bought it five decades earlier and was assured that it belonged to the king. Analysts examined the head closely, using facial reconstructions based on portraits made when the king was alive, as well as a facial injury he was known to have sustained as a result of a 1594 assassination attempt. Their findings, published in 2010, stated that the head had been, quote, positively identified according to the most rigorous arguments of any forensic examination. As a result, the head was donated to a descendant of the king. Genetic researchers, however, have refuted this, claiming that the head was not that of a member of the House of Bourbon, the familial line from which the king supposedly descended, and that the head could not possibly have belonged to Henri IV. In response to this, the original research team claimed that the royal paternal lines are so confused and mixed up that a lack of supporting DNA evidence does not necessarily rule out the possibility of the head in question having belonged to the good king. While the debate continues and uncertainty prevails, the head sits in a Parisian bank vault, awaiting yet another burial. Demon Trap The Gunpowder Plot of 1605 is a well-documented episode of English history, in which Guy Fawkes, a Catholic extremist, led an attempt to blow up the Houses of Parliament. However, until recently, nobody knew the extent of the measures taken to protect King James I in the plot's aftermath. When archaeologists, whose attention was roused during renovation work on a property in Kent, England, discovered a series of scratchings hidden on the underside of floorboards in a room once built to accommodate King James I, their interest was piqued. Closer inspection of the carvings, also known as witch marks, which consist of intersecting lines and cryptic symbols, determined them to be a demon trap. Furthermore, an analysis using dendrochronology, the dating of trees by their rings, suggests that the room was constructed and the demon trap created in the months immediately following the foiled gunpowder plot. The archaeologists concluded that the trap was created to ward off evil and to prevent demonic possession, particularly that of King James, and to protect him when visiting this vast stately home, which at the time belonged to the crown. Throughout the period in which these witch marks were made, a tide of paranoia was sweeping across England as the government published anti-Catholic propaganda insinuating that Guy Fawkes and his conspirators were in league with Satan. It is likely that this superstition is what inspired the craftsmen's carvings, and that they are a symptom of the widespread fear and hysteria that dominated the 17th century. Wall of Bones When in February 2020, researchers and archaeologists excavated an unexplored area of a Belgian cathedral, they had no idea of the horrors that awaited. In the grounds of the cathedral, in Ghent, Belgium, archaeologists came across a densely packed formation of what could only be human bones. As the dig continued, and more and more remains came to light, it became clear that they were not looking at a thrown-together mass grave, but a carefully constructed wall. The structure, made from thousands of bones stacked on top of one another, had clearly been buried for centuries, and appeared to consist primarily of skulls and larger bones, such as thigh and shin bones, but not of smaller ones. Digging further still, the team found several more, and by the time the area was fully excavated, a total of nine walls of human bones had been found. Radiocarbon dating of the remains found them to originate from the latter half of the 15th century, but archaeologists maintained that the walls were not constructed for another few hundred years. None of the walls contained the bones of children, which would have been too fragile to use in this way, or those of the upper body, which would have been too awkward to stack so densely. It was determined by the archaeological team that the walls had come about as a result of an effort to clear the graveyard of the cathedral hundreds of years ago to make room for renovations, or perhaps another graveyard. The workers, who would not have discarded all of the bones out of respect, opted to stack them up into wall-like structures, but were likely too hurried to move the smaller bones, which presumably remained scattered through the displaced earth. Thank you for watching Dark 5. Don't forget to like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond. Your support and engagement help my videos get seen by even more people. And let me know if there are any other creepy historical mysteries you'd like me to investigate.